uh, riveted in solid uh, ring. Yeah, yeah I every believe other so. Row. That's what it looks like because it looks like we have solid here. There's not one riveted. Some solid ones in here. This this bottom row where some is missing. And you said it's around 14th century? I think 14th century. 14th yep. century mail. And this looks a lot like the mail I've tested recently. So this is way more durable than you would imagine. Because this looks like it's around 17 gauge. Some of it maybe 19 gauge or something. Or it's Could be. Yeah, yeah. But we don't know if it's from the erosion or it was just not that uniform because it was made by hand. Because it would be so difficult to make each ring. But theoretically, this would be a hair weaker than the modern mild steel re re reproductions. If they were the exact same. Um, nah, I would say it's probably on par, probably. Yeah. So the testing I did the, with mine would probably get yeah, about the same results if I were to paint this. Um, yeah, if this would, is 14th century, it's probably got some uh, carbon in the in the material, and uh, as long as you're using wire of this gauge, right, you know, it's going to be gauge. it's going to be relatively close. It's about identical if you you held it up. Your target um, simulator is um, all prepared. There's a hole there, isn't it? That's the one we cut in yesterday where we actually cut the rings. They actually were cut through. And I'll actually show an image of that as well. So they can actually see it closer. It's quite amazing how big a gap it produces with just one link missing, right? And you see this one was trying to cut here. Yeah, that's a, that's a fairly large hole if you think about the wedge shape of the spear going in hmm. and how deep it would make mm -hmm. it. I wouldn't have wanted to hit like that, and the one you did was up here. You were missing two rings. Oh, really? Yeah, it looks like two. Okay. I could be Yeah, wrong. I remember we had like at least uh, three rings falling out onto the ground, falling down. Yeah. Okay, let's see how we fare now. It's going to be the, uh, it's going to be your famous uh, overhand. And you've shown me many depictions where we see that, where we see the spear yeah. uh, back, and then we also see the spear extremely long in front of the hand, which doesn't yeah. even seem feasible. Exactly. As it's yeah. going into yeah. an opponent or being yeah. thrust out. Yeah, it's important so, for us to understand nowadays that the way they depicted things, uh, they did it with a different mindset. So it's not like uh, camera frames one by one. Right. Uh, so sometimes they would depict uh, more than one situation in one single image. You would see the ending position sometimes. You would see the starting position. Or you both in one. In between. Or, yeah. Right. So yeah. they couldn't actually show you step by step each. Motion. Well, we don't know if they couldn't. It was just simply a different they mindset of uh, um, of conveying information in images. Right. So. Um, right. And um, uh, we are lacking uh, some understanding of decoding this, so that's one of the big challenges with um, historical uh, imagery. Right? Uh, it's, it's just like I think they showed the most important part to them what they thought the guy was doing, if he was holding it back or if it was out. Yeah. Yeah. Being thrust out, okay, so. so I'm really looking forward to doing the next one. You did one yesterday where you were uh, um, in closer range, and uh, now we're going to look at it, uh, trying to um, reach it's... out and get him. Yes, like, just okay. Let the spear do the work, put it out there, and I'm accelerating the weapon. I'm not using the body so much. I can yeah. just throw the spear yeah. into it and let it slide through the hand. So it's virtually um, a throw, only you uh, don't let go of the weapon completely, right? Yeah, it's a control throw. Yeah, I yeah. see. I see. Okay, yeah, that's a good so phrasing. You can it. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's see what we can do. Here we are back um, on our testing ground, and Fran is about to try his uh, famous uh, overhand spear slide, only now from a wider distance. Wow. I'm going to have to crank it up a bit. Yeah. Maybe if you think more of throwing rather than thrusting. Oh, yeah. So if you... I need to put more throwing energy in it, but let's fix our clay. We did get a small piercing in the clay, but of course that was just through the ranks because of the tape of yeah, the spear. I see. Throw that through. Yeah, so that one would have caused a wound, no doubt. That's definitely one. Yeah, you did cut uh, at least one ring. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, excellent. Uh, if I can get it out. <laughs> I guess it was called a net of battle for a reason. <laughs> Where did we go through? Right here? Um, 
I'm sorry, I'm running the camera, so I was just uh, off focus. Uh, I'm thinking it's right here. Yeah. That was it. How much yeah. did we lose any rings? I think they're still in there. That's why it was so difficult to get it out. Ah. Let's give it, um, there's something sticking out here. I can't really. Oh, this was the other one, wasn't it? That's the other yeah. one. I can't, I can't really do much here uh, running the camera. So how about uh, trying another one? Okay, do we want to reset the uh, clay because there's a nice... I think this was it right here. Yeah, I think so too. It was, it, we did lose rings. Yeah. No, 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 no that's They're the They're probably one. still the inside one. the chain mail. So when you take it off, they will come down. But the hole we, the, what yeah. we've got, I say straighten it quickly. Okay. Yeah, because we've got a nice... It pierced the actual uh, clay. Let's see. So it would definitely felt that. Okay. So, uh, because we have a live audience, maybe you want to move over to the audience and just show, uh, oh, show yeah. the dimple it created. And right. Yeah, we got a nice dimple. Uh, it did penetrate it, but it just all the way stuck in there. It wasn't an actual true penetration, and we actually cut it out. So, is it riveted way. mail or not? It is riveted it's solid mail. The, uh, yesterday, we actually cut three rings out when I was closer. Same kind of thrust, into it. You actually have a little bit of push behind it because, and there's less, uh, uh, you get some, uh, acceleration, you lose some of it, I guess is going to put it, you're trying to control the uh, throw because you don't want to just let it go to where if somebody moved or something, it just loses. So you have that so of the, uh, but to see this kind of penetration from it is actually amazing because, I mean, that's more than enough to wound your opponent if he wasn't wearing any kind of armor or just wearing cloth and go clean through. That's a good point. That's a good point. We're now talking an age where you wouldn't expect everybody to wear armor in the first place. So this is what happens if somebody wears like that thick uh, uh, textile armor uh, underneath um, proper chain mail, right? Correct, correct. Not even mentioning the impact. So even oh, yeah. if it doesn't pierce your organs, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's one hell of a punch that you receive in your chest, right? Yeah. Trent, how, uh, how do you feel about conducting another uh, experiment? And um, this time I would like you to sing a silly song so that you totally loosen up. So that would be, uh, that would be a psychological experiment more than anything. So, um, because uh, um, uh, I would like you to be super relaxed, not really uh, even bothering about how, you, uh, how, how successful that one will be. And let's see what it does. Okay. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> Make friends to do an experiment which he has never done before. Um, this is uh, uh, making a silly dance, and I'm going to accompany you so you don't feel uh, overly silly uh, on your own. Um, this is to loosen yourself up, so you don't even consider uh, you want to hit something. Like, uh, as I said earlier, if you think of cracking a whip, yeah, so if you pick up an imaginary whip and you want to crack it, everybody knows how it works. If you tense up just a little bit, or if you think like, oh, I'm going to crack the whip really hard now. <laughs> It doesn't work. Or think of a dart at the bar. So you're playing darts and you throw the you throw the dart. If you do that, pick up an imaginary dart and throw it. Everybody knows what it feels like. Now, if you tense up really hard and want to give it a really hard, strong throw, it will not work at all, right? And so the more we are concerned with uh, putting a lot of force into something like that, like a spear throw, and this basically is a spear throw, uh, the less effective it will be because this is all about acceleration rather than putting body power behind it. Right. So, are you ready to go for your little silly dance? <laughs> silly dance? <laughs> yeah, you're losing up already. Loosening up already. So, think about your little boy. Do you do any children's songs with your boy? Uh, not really, very often. No, you probably cite the saga. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, cite the saga. Go for it. And move on. I don't know how that would be it's fun we know that we loosen them up. If you're liking it and you know it. Yeah, that's just where I was going to <laughs> If you're happy and you know it, throw your spear. If you're, you know if you're happy and you know it, throw your spear. Yeah. I don't think you very much better. Okay. Wait, wait for the camera. See what we did. Okay, so here we have the spear uh, penetrating. It looks to me like it cut at least one link. Possibly. We've got a good inch in there, so. Okay, so that was, uh, yeah, there you go. It, it produced a hole.
yeah. Hold on. Yeah, we actually yeah. got a hole. Yeah. Okay, so. All right, so. Um, it kind of proves my point uh, why this one didn't produce much more energy than the one beforehand. It means that um, you don't need uh, excessive force or to tense up to uh, actually pierce mail. You can do it in a rather relaxed fashion. So, um, and um, pretty much all combat training is about people becoming calm in extreme situations. Um, and um, when I fence, I try to smile all the time so that I'm relaxed because it makes you more responsive. The, the more tense you are, um, the harder it becomes to, um, say, change the path of the sword. And um, yeah, so relaxation rules. Do silly dances, people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a cool one. Thank you. There you go, Seth. Okay, are there any final words you want to say? Uh, I think Roland had a really good idea there. I think relaxation is a good thing, and yes, this type of technique is not a force technique, it is an uh, acceleration technique, or a throwing technique, like he speaks about darts, when you take a dart and you don't muscle it, you just let it go, you throw it, you throw a dart to get the energy behind it. So I think Roland's idea, although I felt quite embarrassed, actually helped take my mind off of what I was doing, and yes, it did improve the performance of the overall throwing slide, and I hope you all enjoyed our little episode here. Although it's not as devastating as one of them, closer range, the distance will be the main factor that would make that worth, worthwhile. And I think that is what we're seeing in the depictions. And I hope you all enjoyed our testing today here at Aus Folk uh, Viking Martial Arts School. And I bid you farewell. <laughs>